Hi guys, this is a review for Unit 8B, Writing Linear Equations. This will help you out with your final exam. Remember, in order to write linear equations, we need to know two things. We first need to recall our slope formula. Remember, our slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Remember, we can use that slope formula when we're given two points in order to find that slope. The second thing we need is if we are writing equations in slope-intercept form, we need to know what slope-intercept form is. Remember, that's y equals mx plus b, where we need two things. m is our slope, and b is our y-intercept. So if we take a look at our first three examples, what we have to do is go through and first find the slope before we can write an equation in slope-intercept form. So looking at example number one, my first step is going to be to go through and find the slope. Remember, it doesn't matter which point you start with, but whatever point you start with for y, that's the point you want to start with for x. I always like to go through and label them, so I call this x1, y1, x2, y2. And now we just can go ahead and plug them right into our slope equation. So y2 is negative 3 minus y1, which is positive 3 all over x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is 0. And we keep simplifying. So we get negative 6 over 2, which gives me negative 3 as my slope. The next thing we want to look for is we always want to look to see, did they already give us the y-intercept? Well, remember, to be the y-intercept, you need your x value to be 0. So in this case, they already gave us that point where x is 0. So we know right away my b value or my y-intercept is 3. For my last step, I just go ahead and plug it into slope-intercept form. So I have y equals m, which is negative 3x, plus my y-intercept, which is 3. So there is my first equation. Now what we have to do is take a look at our second example. For this one, we again need to start by calculating that slope. So I'm going to label my points x1, y1, x2, y2. And again, I'm just going to plug directly into my equation. y2 minus y1 gives me 2 minus a negative 1, be careful with your signs there, over x2 minus x1, which is 4 minus 1. We go through and simplify. In our numerator, I get 2 plus a positive 1, which is 3, over 4 minus 1, which is 3. So my slope is 1. Now here, we didn't get as lucky because if you look, neither of these points are our y-intercept. So what we have to do is we have to go through and we have to calculate the y-intercept. Remember, to do that, we can use our slope-intercept formula. So what we do is we take y equals mx plus b, and we need to solve for b. We know our m value is 1, and remember, for x and for y, we can pick either point and still get the right answer. I'm going to go ahead and pick my second point since I don't have any negatives there. Y, my y value is 2, my x value is 4, and now we just need to solve for b. So we have 2 equals 1 times 4 is 4 plus b. Go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides, and we find out that b is going to be equal to negative 2. So then for my actual answer, don't forget we need an equation, and it's y equals m, which is 1, so we don't need to write that in, and then our x value, and then plus our b value. But since our b value is negative here, remember we can just write that as minus 2. Okay, if you go ahead and take a look at the next one, again, you know our first step. We have to calculate that slope. So I'm going to label my points, x1, y1, x2, y2. And I just go ahead and plug them right into my equation. Negative 5 minus 4 all over 3 minus 3. And that's plugging it right into here. And we get negative 9 over 0. Now, if you guys remember, 0, that's a special case. That's telling you your slope is undefined. So remember, when your slope is undefined, if you have a special case, you have to think, does that mean it's x equals a number or y equals a number? Well, remember, to have an undefined slope, that tells you you have a vertical line. So right away, you should know it's x equals some number as your equation. Well, if you look, our x values are both the same. So that's also another hint for you. So my equation is just going to be x equals that x value, which is 3. 
If you take a look at your next examples, you guys should also be able to write these equations given the graphs. So now remember from the graphs, what we have to do is we actually have to pick out those points. What you can do is you can go through and you can pick out those points and calculate the slope using the formula. Or remember, we can just go ahead and we can calculate our slope by counting our rise over our run. If you look at example four, we need two things. We need our slope and we need our y-intercept or that b value. Well, if you look, remember your y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis. So that's at this point right here. That's the point zero, zero. So we know right away that my b value is going to be zero. From here, we can use this point or we could go with the points that were already given to us. It doesn't matter because no matter how we count, we're going to get the same slope. So remember, we always want to move from left to right. So in this case, we go up two, so that's in the positive direction. And then we go to the right three, so that's also in the positive direction. Remember our slope from a graph, it's always equal to rise over run. So in this case, my m value is going to be equal to two over three. Now we have m and b, so we just plug it into our equation for slope intercept form. So y equals my m value, which is two thirds, then x, and then plus my b value. Well, since my b value is zero, remember we don't really need to write that out. Same thing if we look at our next example. First, we need to make sure we can identify our m and our b. Well, if you look again, your b is your y-intercept or where we hit the y-axis. So that's the point zero, three. My m value, we can now count rise over run. So in this case, I'm going down one, two, three spaces. So that'll give me a negative three and then to the right one. So my slope again is rise over run or negative three over one, which we know just simplifies to negative three. So again, don't forget you need the actual equation, y equals m, which is negative three, then our x term, and then plus my y-intercept, which is three. Okay, so that should be a nice little review for you of how to write the equations by hand. Remember what we also did in unit 8B was we went ahead and we calculated that line of best fit. So if you take a look at number six, you are going to need your graphing calculator, so make sure you take those out. The table shows the number of calories in grams of fat. Write an equation that models the number of calories as a function of the grams of fat. So remember what we need to recall is when we look at our table, our first row is going to be our x values. Our second row is going to be our y values. And remember, when we type these in our calculator, we use list 1 and list 2 as our x and our y values. What you also may want to jot down are the steps to go through and type this into your calculator. So if you take a look, the first thing that you want to do is you want to pull up your calculator and we need to make sure our plots are off. So remember to do that, we hit the second button and then y equals, I'm sorry, we want to make sure our plots are on, on, on. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and scroll down to option number five. And when we take a look at option number five, that's going to say plot on. So we go ahead and we hit enter. Then you need to hit enter one more time and that will say done. Remember, if your plots aren't on, it's not going to allow you to create the line of best fit. Now what we have to do is we can go ahead and hit our stat button and we hit enter because we want to choose edit and we want to go ahead and enter in our lists. Remember, if you have data already entered in these lists here, what you would do is you would arrow up to the top to where L1 is highlighted. You would press clear and then you would hit enter and then that would clear out any data you may already have in there. Remember, we never press the delete button. So now in L1, we can just go through and we can enter in all of our values. So what we have is our first is we have 19, go ahead and hit enter. Then we go 31, hit enter, and then we have 34, enter, and then 39, enter, and then 43, enter. And if you look, we should have five values entered in there. Then we can arrow over to the right, and now we need to take care of our L2 values. So we have 410. Hit enter, 580, hit enter, 590, hit enter, uh, 640, hit enter, and then 660, and go ahead and hit enter. Once your list is complete, remember L1 and L2 should always match up. You should always have the same number of values. What we do to get our equation is we hit stat, 
and then we have to scroll to the right to calc for calculate and then we choose option number four for linear regression that gives us that line of best fit then we have to hit enter and there we go we have our equation so when we come over here we want to write it as a function so remember that function notation what we like to use is f of x equals and again we're still putting it in the form of f of x or y equals mx plus b so what we have to do is we have to pull up our slope well remember in this case they use a in your calculator we like to round to the nearest hundredth so we have 10.55x plus my b term which gives me 225.67 and again we just pull that straight from your calculator 10.55x plus 225.67 we round up because of that 5 there so again on your packet what you guys may want to do is you may want to jot down those steps because I know we went through them a little quickly first thing is you hit second and then you hit y equals and you make sure your plots are on your plots are on for line of best fit that's your first step second we hit stat and then we hit edit and remember that's where we enter in our list into L1 and L2 then our third step we go through and we hit stat and then we scroll over to calc and then we choose option number four and then we can go ahead and write our equation you may want to make a note when clearing lists so to clear your list Remember, you have to press clear and then enter. Do not press that delete button. We do not press that delete button. Okay, so now you guys have all those steps listed out. So let's take a look at our last example for review for this section. It says the table shows the median floor area of a new single family houses in the United States during the period from 1995 to 1999. Write an equation that models the floor area in square feet of a new single family house as a function of the number of years since 1995. So again, we're writing our function here and we have to be careful because we want to use number of years since 1995. Well, what we know is again, our first row is our X values, our second row is our Y values. And again, we have list one and list two. The only thing is, is instead of entering in these years, we need them to be in terms of number of years since 1995. So if we're in 1995, the number of years since then, that's just going to be zero. 96, one year has passed. 97, two years have passed. 98, three years have passed. And 99, four years have passed. Now we can go ahead and go to our calculator. We need to make sure we hit stat, edit to enter in our list. Remember, we need to clear these out, so we arrow up, press clear and enter, and then arrow over to do the same thing with list one, clear and enter, and now we can enter in our data. So we have zero, one, two, three. So in this case, oh, and then four as well for 1999, so make sure we enter all those in. And then scroll over for list two. What we have is 1920 enter and then we have 1950 enter 1975 enter 2000 enter and then lastly we have 2028 20, enter and again we want to make sure those match up with the which they do so to create our equation we hit stat we arrow over to calc we press option number four and we hit enter and here is our equation so for number seven we need to write a function so we have f of x equals my m value which is my a value so we have 26.6x and then plus my y intercept which in this case is 1921.4 so there is our equation now there's also a second part here we want to estimate the size of a home in 2012 so in the year 2012 we have to figure out how many years has that been since 1995 well remember what you can do is a little shortcut is you can take 2012 minus 1995 or you can count that would put my x value at 17 
So now all we have to do is go to that equation, which we have 2, 6, 0.6, and then times my x value, which is 17, since 17 years are between 95 and 17, or in 2012, plus my y-intercept, which is 1921.4, and now it's just a matter of simplifying, and we get 2373.6 square feet, but remember, we like normally rounding this, so we can say about 2,374 square feet. That's how big a house would be based on this model in 2012. Okay, hope you guys remember all of this. Make sure that you go through and practice these on your calculator. And good luck studying for your final exam.